This is F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot show. I'm your moderator of this chat, Hiroja Shai. Please note that this podcast will have spoilers. In this chat, we will discuss the underlying themes, historical influences, inspirations, technology, ethical dilemmas, and other inspirational insights we have gleaned from each episode of the first season of Mr. Robot. We will be bringing on experts to share their insights and knowledge with us in each chat. We will also be reviewing each episode of the first season, as well as the second season when it premieres. We are awake, we are free, we are alive for F Society IRC Podcasts. This is a review and recap of the season premiere episode of Mr. Robot Season 1, Hello, Frank. So Mr. Robot is a television show that follows the main character, Elliot, played by Raim Malkai, as this hacker that, as he states in the episode itself, he hacks uh, at night and works as a security consultant for a business called Allsafe. He safeguards the cybersecurity for corporations and has a bit of a conflict when it comes to that, he particularly doesn't look like the way of society is run. Uh, he, he basically states, you know, F society. He feels that we're consumed with consumerism, that everything is rigged. Uh, he has a particular uh, outlook about the world that is very much in line with uh, individuals who are hackers in and of themselves. At the same time, he believes he can save the world. He even says this as a character, and we'll get into that in a moment, but he states that he feels that he can save the world, and he does this by hacking. And it opens up the episode, opens up with him narrating and speaking to the audience, uh, but he's actually speaking to an invisible friend, which brings up a a mental affliction that the main character may have that I'll, I'll get to it towards the end, but he's basically narrating certain aspects of the, uh, the episode when he's talking to his imaginary friend, his inner thoughts, or if you're a comic book uh, geek, the thought bubble that pops up when people talk in comic book, char- comic book characters. So what Elliot does is he goes to a coffee house and he's waiting for the owner named Ron to come in and he confronts Ron. And how he confronts Ron is by stating that because he had been using his coffee business as a means of the Wi-Fi connection uh, for a very long time, it's... It bothered him that he had such an ease of connection, that the connection speed was so great that a coffee house had this fiber connection, giga speed internet service. So he started poking around, which is part of the kind of the hacker culture, the fact that they ask questions, they seek answers, they see a problem, they seek to find a solution. They utilize their skills and their thought process uh, to do this. Uh, and when he talks to Ron, he basically finds out that he found the servers, which were part of the Tor network, and that what he did was he set up, an, basically, what, while not stating this, but he set up an exit node so he can find out the, what type of traffic was on these Tor servers. And he gives uh, Ron some credit for, for hiding the servers, but he corrects Ron with the notion that Tor is not quite as anonymous as he thinks it is. And this is true. Everything in this scene that he talks about how uh, he controls the exit nodes, means he controls the traffic, so he knows what's going on in the Tor network is true. The Tor in itself is not um, as anonymous as people think, and that um, the means upon which he was looking at the Wi-Fi and the fiber connections and stuff like that, all this is very accurate and, and truthful. Uh, he also used a ta- uh, hacking term called AFK, which is means away from keyboard, uh, is another thing aspect about uh, hackers or those who are within the tech industry that they have a bit of a social anxiety disorder or they have an issue with interacting people on a one-on-one basis or even a group basis. Uh, This is why they're they're online. They feel that they're able to connect much easier with people uh, or interact or engage uh, through the use of the internet, through the use of computers. That's how they're able to socialize. That's how they're able to make friends, make contacts, uh, deal with the world at large. And they, they show that kind of traitor aspect that's common, often associated, but not exclusive to those who are within the tech industry or within the hacking culture. And we'll get into that towards the end, but he exhibits this by stating that, you know, he doesn't interact really in the real world. Uh, he doesn't engage with people. And he actually also disclosed some personal information about his father passing away and how he doesn't have anyone to talk to anymore. And Ron tried to use this as an opportunity to try to engage with Elliot on a one-on-one basis, but 
Elliot wasn't having it. Uh, Ron thought Elliot was trying to blackmail him. That's not the case. What Elliot did was he basically uh, read it out Ron by informing the law enforcement um, all the data and all the information they hacked about the type of website that he was running, which was a kiddie porn website, uh, all the particular data and information. And not only did he leave it with Ron, but he left it with the law enforcement. So that way, when he exited the coffee shop, uh, Ron didn't have the ability to contact his sys admins, which is a short shortening for system administrators, and have them clear the websites and, and or website and clear the uh, network and prevent uh, law enforcement from finding out any information. So that is just basically the the opening sequence here, and then it's, this leads us to, to uh, Elliot going to work, uh, where he works at a place called All Safe. All Safe is a uh, a company that works for something called Evil Corp. We don't know what Evil Corp really stands for because already in the beginning of the series, they have established that our protagonist, Elliot, has a bit of a decisional problem. And we'll get into that towards the end. Um, think of the essence of the protagonist from Fight Club, where, again, he has an imaginary friend and he has uh, delusions where he, he sees things or hears things or perceives things in the world in a certain way and since we, Elliot is our protagonist uh, we don't know what the true name of the company that he um, his client which is Evil Corp I'll say for Texas the, the, that particular corporation's uh, cyber security we don't know what Evil Corp's real name is and everyone refers it to as Evil Corp and not by its real name so every time we hear about the company it's always referred to as Evil Corp not only by the protagonist but also by other characters the media uh, the marketing, uh, the displays, uh, the the ads that are, the in ads that are within the television, it's always referred to as Evil Corp from here on out. So Ron gets to work. He meets up with his friend Angela, and basically Angela is um, his best friend since childhood. And when he meets Angela. She's like, you didn't come to my birthday party. He said he had other things. She, she, she's, she knows that he has social anxiety problems, and she's trying to encourage him to get out, to engage. And this is something he promised to do, uh, something that he had not done. And he actually did try to go to a part, her party, but because of his social anxiety, because of his fear, if you will, his internalized fear of being around people, he couldn't make himself go into the bar that the party was happening. Instead, he did uh, what he did, which was take down Ron. Uh, Angela has a boyfriend that tries to, in a, in a fashion, um, aggressively engage with Elliot, uh, which doesn't work with um, with Elliot at all. It's almost like um, Angela's boyfriend doesn't quite understand that Elliot's social anxiety issues is a is a real thing. He so almost kind of skirts over it or dis- almost disregards it. He tries, he tries to be nice about it. He tries to engage because he knows that Angela and Elliot do have a strong bond or relationship and have had for years and he wants to be Elliot's friend. But overall, he, he doesn't quite seem to understand that that Elliot, you know, he he has a social anxiety disorder. He actually touches uh, Elliot, which is something Elliot doesn't like. He doesn't like to be touched. And he knew that Elliot doesn't like to be touched, but he, he kind of did it anyway. And he said, oh, I forgot you don't like that. So there's a little bit of micro, little dismissive things about Elliot's disorder in here that other characters do not um, fully or completely understand. Um, Elliot does have to see a psychiatrist, which is a next sequence. And I know I skipped the sequence about him on the subway and seeing the black men, uh, men in black, as well as the character of Christian Slater. We'll get back to that in a second, but I think this is important to discuss um, how Elliot engages with people. Uh, He has to see a counselor. We don't know why. We just know that he's forced to be there. And in this session, he, he explains to the audience or to his imaginary friend that he hacked his counselor's website. So he knows everything about her. He knows that she's a divorced person. She's on Facebook. Uh, he ha- he runs a password pro- program that allows him to break into the password. He talks about um, 
how it's a very simple password, easy to fix, which was his favorite, her favorite band and her birthday backwards. And this comes important because he does a little bit of what's called social hacking uh, later on to a couple of different uh, people within the episode to find out information. But he knows everything about her. He actually kind of like likes her because she often engages with him. Uh, he has a very big uh, sequence in here where he again talks to his uh, imaginary friend about what his thoughts and feelings about society, but he doesn't say it out loud to his counselor. And his counselor kind of knows that when he goes off into a distance, he kind of internalizes his thoughts and doesn't state what he's actually really feeling. It's clear that the the per- protagonist has some serious uh, health issues, mental health issues uh, that he's struggling with. Uh, but he also has his very um, ethos or philosophy when it comes to his perception of society, how he feels about Steve Jobs, how he, you know, Steve Jobs got his, we, everyone considers him to be a genius, but he got his wealth on the backs of children. That's a quote from the protagonist. And so he has a bit of an anger issues. He feels that society at large is not necessarily doomed, but off on the wrong path. And that he believes, and he states it in the episode himself, that he is capable of saving society. That he can do it. So we go back and forth with him, with the counselor, and then him engaging with Angela's boyfriend and being, uh, he he also did a hack of Angela's boyfriend, so he knows Angela's boyfriend. While a nice guy, in his, in his words, a nice guy because he's dumb, uh, is not smart enough to be anything else, uh, he's cheating on his best friend, and he doesn't want to tell Angela because she knows that she has uh, basically a horrible taste in men. So he has no idea what other what other douchebag she might date, and he's capable because of her boyfriend being such a dumb guy, capable of handling him. So he doesn't want to tell her. Um, to finish out the beginning of this, before we get back into the black men and the Christian Slater character, the main client, Evil Corp, comes to All Safe, um, the cybersecurity security firm that Elliot works for. And the reason why they're coming is because they've been hacked. Um, there's been a series of hacks that have been going on every week for the past couple of weeks. And they have come to find out what exactly is going on. And Elliot is uh, one of the security tech guys. And Angela, his best friend, manages that particular account. So they're coming to, to the place to meet one-on-one with his boss, whose name is uh, Gideon. And Gideon supervises all the, the tech guys there and the clients. And he even says later on in the episode how important it is to keep Evil Corp as a client because they're 80% of their business, uh, Allsafe's business. If Allsafe were to lose it as a client, they, they're they done. They will no longer be able to function as a company. So who comes to the meeting are two key characters is Tyler Willick, um, played by Martin Watson. And uh, what is the name of the bad guy? Was the reported bad guy, uh, Terry Cullen. Terry Cullen by Bruce Altman, who is a character actor. You might have seen him in a lot of movies or uh, uh, TV shows. He always pops up. He's a good character actor. And he comes in, and uh, Elliot makes an observation as uh, Terry Cullen is taking the size of the tech groups and looking at the techie people that he has like a back BlackBerry, which is not a you know a smartphone or very advanced piece of technology. Uh, that he obviously doesn't do anything with technology, that he's a bit of a moron in a sense. And then the vice president or a much younger guy named uh, Tyra Willock looks at Elliot's monitor and observes that Elliot is operating off of GNOME. Now, GNOME is a Linux uh, operating system. Um, it's an open source system. Um, when we talked about open source, uh, Linux is one of those open source programs that are out there. GNOME is something that a very uh, tech-heavy person would utilize. And what surprised or took Elliot aback was that this uh, character, whose name is Tyler Willock, not only know that Elliot was operating off of GNOME, but stated that he was oper- he uses Linux and that he uses KDE, which is another type of operating system that is based off of Linux. And he even tells Elliot, because as Elliot says in his internal monologue, what is an, you know, an executive utilizing Linux? And Tyler voices that thought out loud. 
and he basically hints to the fact to Elliot that he may he himself may have been at one point in life a bit of a hacker because he says, you know, you can't break old habits. And Linux is something that um, people who do are very tech savvy and hacking do utilize Linux as a means of operating on the internet and a part of the hacking culture and, and create a lot of different programs out of Linux in of itself. So that gives you insight a little bit onto that character. So we eventually go back and we go a little bit forward and we find out that Elliot is a morphine user. Uh, he utilizes morphine to kind of deal with the internal pain that he has um, more so than just um, hacking, which is another social aspect of himself that he does. Uh, he also, what he does is he also is a bit of a stalker. He is stalking the boyfriend of his therapist, whom he looked the information out because he knows what through her emails and her Facebook that she's dating and she's on eHarmony. And he found out the guy that she chose to go on dates with and that he wasn't able to find any additional information. So he went to track down um, this fellow named Martin. And what he did was he did a bit of a social hack. Uh, he engaged with Martin while, while he was uh, walking his dog and said, you know, I need to call my mom, but was unable to, uh, you know, his battery to his phone was dead, which wasn't true. Basically, what he did was he. He uses uh, Martin's phone to call his own phone to be able to obtain Martin's uh, phone number so he can find out additional information about Martin. It was during this period of time um, as uh, Elliot is about to go back onto the subway and go possibly go home that he gets a call from Angela is asking her to come back to to all save because Evil Corp once again is being hacked and it's one of the worst hacks that has happened. In fact, what it is is a DOS attack, which is a denial of service attack. Uh, but before we get to the nature of the attack in itself, uh, let's talk about Elliot's uh, Men in Black. Um, in the initial opening sequence of the episode, you see like a distorted view of the world in it itself. It's uh, very blurry. You can't distinguish any of the figures. It is a bunch of men in a room that clearly in a high rise overlooking the city. And then it cuts the way to Ron's cafe. And then when Ron, after the sequence, you, what you have is you have Elliot going on his way home and he's on the subway. And he states to the audience or to his imaginary friend that he's being followed. And you look over and you see two men in black. And that he, he feels ever since um, possi the possibility of him hacking Ron that they're on to him. That's the reason why he's being followed. He destroyed a man's business in three minutes. And people like him that have that type of power, the power structure in itself, don't, don't like that. So he perceives and believes himself to be followed. At the same time, he's engaged by someone who looks like a homeless man, played by a uh, Christian Slater, whom we later know to be later on the episode as a man named Mr. Robot. And he, Mr. Robot, says, "You know, hell of a day." He talks to Elliot, and Elliot doesn't know what to do or respond back to him. Uh, but he takes note of the black men, the men in black, and Christian Slater. When he goes and does the social hack of Martin, Christian Slater's character appears again, as well as do the men in black. Uh, at this point in time, because they have set the tone of the fact that Elliot has mental health issues, we have no idea if he's actually seeing these people at all or not. We don't know if they're real, uh, if there's something that's inside his head, a delusion or not. Uh, when he talked to his therapist, he... He openly stated that he was no longer seeing Men in Black, so that might have been one of many issues that he was going to see the counselor for. So he does this social hack of Martin, the boyfriend of his therapist, and he returns to back to his place of work. Um, he also, again, sees the Men in Black, and he sees the, char uh, the Christian Slater characters before returning to work. So he gets to work. It is clear from the onset that uh, Elliot is the better hacker to the tech that they already had on call named Lloyd. And 
Elliot is looking at everything, and they've been trying to reset the servers, trying to prevent the the DODS attack from going on. Apparently, it's been going on for almost an hour, so their client is losing money up to thirteen million dollars. It's been reported uh, worldwide that the, the evil corp is under a DODS attack, so the word is out. So. Elliot is looking at everything. His boss shows up, and he realizes that it's not a DODS attack, but it's a rootkit attack. And what a rootkit attack is, it's just basically a malware program that sits inside servers or a computer and is able to operate within a computer to do whatever it needs to do. It's able to hide itself within a computer. And because it can do that, it's allowed to it can control a computer. And so to kind of get into the, the actual what is called a rootkit um, program is probably based off of an already existing program that you may have heard about called Stunix, which is a the program you may have heard about that uh, messed with Iran's uh, uh, centrifuges and prevented um, or set back Iran's uh, nuclear program. And what Stunix did was it was a worm, a link file, and a rootkit all combined to be able to hide its existence within the servers and the network uh, within Iran. And so this sounds like this is a similar type of protocol or program that uh, may have been implemented in the Evil Corpse servers. So Gideon goes and takes Elliot to Dulles. Uh, and the reason why he does that is because Dulles is where a lot of the, and this is a real world application, Dulles is already uh, called the technical corridor, 70% of all internet traffic goes through the Dulles area, this corridor, where there's nothing but a bunch of server farms. And obviously, Evil Corp holds a number of their servers at this server farm if they don't already, within themselves, own the servers themselves, like the entire farm. And so he goes through and he tries to get them to reboot the entire system. Take They're already taking everything offline. And he finds one server that actually has the malware program within it. And what they do is they go and he does what he, he needs to do as a hacker to prevent uh, that uh, malware, that infected server from being part of the network again, reboots everything else, isolated that infected server. And the technique that he's doing is uh, something that, you know, if you are a, a tech person, you're doing everything here is pretty accurate, how they put everything online, uh, everything, even, you know, boxing out the infected server. So he does what he does, and he prevents the evil corp servers from being infected and everything from going on um, offline and everything being good. And because of that, uh, you know, he gets high sprays from his boss. He pretty much saves the company, um, his company Allsafe, but also the corporation Evil Corp. And because he's a hacker and because he has a need to find answers to things, he wants to know who the hackers are, and hackers always leave a signature. They always leave a file or a name or graffiti. Anonymous is known for this. Uh, they leave some type of signature that lets people know that they are the ones involved uh, in the hacked or the, the, the defacing of a website. And he does that by looking at the DAT file. And by doing the DAT file and doing a read, he finds out the name of the file, which is called F Society which he thinks is a dot is F society uh, dot zero zero. And when he looks at the read to find out um, whatever little note that might've been left by the hacker, it says, leave me here. And he wrestles with himself, whether or not he should leave this very malicious malware program within this corporation's servers. And he decides that's what he's going to do. He's going to leave it. He, he doesn't delete it. He struggled with the concept and decided that he's going to leave it. So he gets home. He's on the jet with uh, his boss. His boss confides to him that he's gay. Um, he also tells Elliot that he kind of knows that Elliot doesn't really like working for All Safe and that he secretly would love for um, All Safe to collapse, uh, which kind of disturbs Elliot in a sense because I don't think he realizes that because he perceives himself as somebody who can read people very well, that people will also read him, may not completely very well, but read him as well. That they're able to get some insight within his kind of psyche. 
So they continue, you know, they get home. He basically saves the company, all safe, the same city, corporation. And as he gets on the subway, he once again encounters Mr. Robot, this homeless dressing kind of guy. And Mr. Robot, you know, speaks to him directly, says he's getting off the train here. And Elliot just looks at him and stares at him and goes, are you talking to me? Uh, but Mr. Robot doesn't respond and gets off the train. So Elliot struggles, decides he's going to get off. Of course, he's going to get off. And he talks to Mr. Robot. They engage in a type of conversation. And basically, the Christian Slater states that he has to show him some stuff before he can answer any of the type of questions. He shares a story with him about his father, about stealing. Everybody steals everything, anything, and that's how they make their money. So he takes Elliot to the hideout, the hacker hideout, which happens to be at Coney Island. And when you first walk into the place, it's, you know, it's closed up, it's boarded up, you know, has the guard rail down. But as you go into the side of the building, you see these coaxial cables running on the side of the building and you see a smile on Elliot's face because he knows what those cables are. He knows those are data cable lines. So Elliot goes into place and Mr. Robot just lays it out to him that this is a, a hacker community. They come here to work on the project. Um, they take the, they bring their own computers and they leave. It's fair and simple. Um, Elliot doesn't understand this because he's like, you guys are meeting in the real world. That's not something that hackers do. And Mr. Robot explains the reason why they do this is because of Omegs. Uh, they didn't re- meet in the real world. Um, the FBI was able to bust one guy. And from that one guy, six hackers went into the prison. And the reason why they, they went to prison is because they refused to meet in the real world. Everything was done online. So therefore, it was traceable, emails, chat logs, things of that nature. And he calls the group Omegs, uh, O-M-E-G-Z, which is actually a, the real base inspiration was um, Lusik, which is the, the big uh, anonymous group that uh, hacked in all those intelligent uh, contractor communities and put that information out online. Uh, basically, what happened was just like the just like the Christian Slater character, Mr. Robot explained, they were able to flip one guy and were able to get everybody. It was called a central point of failure, uh, which is a key part of cybersecurity. If you're able, or any type of security, if you're able, if everything's all centralized and you're able to attack that one central point, then the entire dominoes fall. And that's why people are all about decentralization to prevent that within the uh, teching hacker community. So he, he goes to the place, uh, Christian Slater, Mr. Robot, you know, breaks down the concept of what the purpose is. And since Elliot didn't delete the, the program, he's the type of hacker, the type of person that Mr. Robot wants to work with him, work on the project. And he wants basically Mr. Robot to allow him access to the root kit, to the malware. Um, Elliot's not going to do that. He doesn't quite do that off the bat he eventually does but he doesn't quite trust anyone or anything not even this little hacking group uh he even though he's very excited and finds the whole idea of their concept of the meeting here and leaving and exiting here uh intriguing he he, he's not for it so he comes home he meets angela his best friend who's out on the stoop waiting for him uh, she was bringing his bet favorite movie, which is Back to the Future 2, which I find is kind of a little bit funny. Uh, they go up to his apartment. Um, there's a girl there that he had slept with earlier that was also his drug dealer. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit. Um, so she leaves. Uh, he feels embarrassed. He goes back to the um, hacking community, to the to the location. And he basically does this by stating to Mr. Robot that he's going to turn them in, that he has uh, no plans to help them at whatsoever. Um, Mr. Robot basically says that that's not why he's here. He understands that the society at large is sick, that it's at fault. And then he basically lays the line of why they're doing what they're doing. And the reason why they're attacking Evil Corp is because Evil Corp controls 70% of all of the credit 
companies, all the debt companies, loan companies. And if they take down Evil Corp, if they take down their servers, if they have access to the entire basically mainframe, they're able to wipe all that debt, all that information. That even with this, any type of paper backups, there's not enough paper backups in the world to to verify all that debt. And basically everyone's going to go down to zero. It's kind of like a fight club type of a deal. Um, and it, this very much intrigues Elliot because it does speak to his ethos. He doesn't like evil corp. He doesn't like the consumerism that people have been um, doing. His friend is in, in major debt. All his friends are in debt. And so he's intrigued by this concept, but he at the same time cannot bring himself completely or fully to go for it. And so what he does is he creates a file that's basically um, the entire file concerning uh, what has happened to bring to his boss, you know, all the information that he was able to gather about Mr. Robot, which basically was the network IP address to the DAT file to his boss. And then he was going to turn them in as he's sitting down the meeting with the big wigs and stuff. Elliot struggles because what he had done basically is he created two files. One, which was what, what uh, Mr. Robot wanted him to do, which was to put the IP address of Terry Colby, the bad guy of Evil Corp, um, one of the main Evil, Evil Corp people, onto the DAT file so it looks like he was responsible for the hack. And the other was the actual truth, which was in a white file. And so he's he going to the meeting, he pulls out the white file, which is the actual truth of everything. And Angela, his his um, friend, is running the meeting, giving um, his uh, her account of the events that are going on. Uh, Terry Colby's there along with the FBI because this is a major hack of a corporation. So there's, you know, criminal implications of this. They need to find out if it's a terrorist threat or just corporate espionage. If it's just a, you know, a hacker group, what's going on? Um, so Terry Colby doesn't treat Angela very well. She's actually gets dismissed from the meeting in of itself. Um, basically fired as the head of the account. Uh, Elliot doesn't like this. He tries to defend Angela, stating, you know, she did everything she was supposed to. It was because of her call that this is the reason why the, the corporation was saved. So he switches out the file. He takes the white file back, back into his backpack and he pulls out the blue file, which is the Mr. Robot file, which has uh, Terry Colby's IP address on it, which would indicate that from Mr. Colby's terminal, then uh, it was he who was responsible for the hack on the corporation. So he hands it over to the FBI, the blue file, and then he basically waits. His friend gets fired. He basically waits, and he's waiting to see you know, the FBI but bust Mr. Terry Colby. Uh, it's been a number of days, 19 days, he states. So he goes back to his old habits of hacking his um, his counselor, particularly the guy she's dating. He finds out that his counselor's date is actually a married guy. Um, and then he convinces this married guy to not only uh, stop dating his counselor, but tell her the truth that he's married, he has kids, he does this all the time, that it doesn't mean anything. Um, it's basically tell the truth. And then he takes the guy's dog and brings it to, brings it home. So he's basically waiting. Uh, he sees his counselor. He knows she's devastated and everything. He eventually comes um, to work. His friend, uh, since her being fired and removed from the account, Angela has not spoken to Elliot, even though he's texted and tried to call her. Uh, when he's in his counseling session, he gets the, I guess you can say the push to actually speak to her in person. So he speaks to her in person and he's like, he's trying to apologize. He's trying to understand. And Angela is basically saying, you know, he didn't really do anything wrong. She's basically saying that he needs to stop rescuing her he needs to stop defending her that she's capable of handling this issue herself i if that wasn't that if you stop um doing that to allow her to fail to allow her to lose that it's okay and he actually gives her a hug which she accepts and she knows this is a big deal for him to actually actively touch another person and for him to allow her to touch her so they're having this moment and everyone's staring at them in the office because they're in the office space and it's a little awkward. And then they realize they're not actually staring at them. They're staring at the television set. 
and it reveals that Terry Colby has been busted by the FBI. Uh, he was responsible for the hack, um, which is not the truth, but it's what the truth that Mr. Robot wanted. Uh, the story goes that Terry Colby was in negotiations with his employer to receive a higher wage, um, and they use this uh, hacking as a tactic to increase his pay. So that's the cover story. So Mr. Robot tried to go to back to the hacking group to try to celebrate. They weren't there. He goes back and goes home. He see, he's in Times Square, and he sees all the news reports, and he sees how basically um, – you know, his work did what it did. It took down a big guy within a corporation. And then the men in black pick him up. And at this point, it kind of confirms to you as an audience that he's actually being followed, that these are not delusions of grandeur, that he's actually being followed. Uh, it's not the FBI or any anything like that. Um, we're not sure who it is that picks him up, only that he is picked up. And as he's picked up, He's brought to the room that we saw earlier that was all fuzzy and fade out with a bunch of um, men in the room in a, in a high-rise tire, a high-rise tower. And sitting at the center of the room is the guy, Tyler Willick, who, who knew about Linux, who was executive vice president um, that was with Ter uh, Terry Colby at all the meetings. And so has an understanding of technology. And he also observed uh, at the initial meeting with Angela where Elliot decided to switch out the files that Elliot had put the white file back into his backpack and switched out and gave the blue file to um, the FBI. Um, we don't know at this point how all this is going to play out. All we know is that our main protagonist, Mr. Elliot, is in this room with these men, with, in particular with Tyler Willick. And that's how the pilot ends. So my thoughts on this whole entire um, episode is that it is very well engaging, very pretty accurate of the tech, you know, the tech uh, side of things. I think they everything they use, all the terms they used were pretty, pretty accurate. Uh, one of the biggest things that stood out for me was the fact that uh, the monitors that they use um for hacking or for the, that Elliot was working off of. You don't see, like you often see in movies and TV shows, you don't see the big wall of monitors. It was just two screens. Um, maybe you might've saw in the background three screens, but you didn't see like five, six screens in this mega like complex of computers. It was just very basic and simple. Even the place that he work out all safe. Everybody was in a cubicle. There wasn't a big, huge monolithic, you know, computer center that everyone worked out of. Uh, so I like that aspect of it. Uh, I like the fact that he, he does have social anxiety and it is that aspect of it is being depicted well. I particularly don't like the voices in the head stuff so much. I think that's a, a trope that's been dragged out so often in television. I don't know exactly know where it's going with him when it comes to that. I think it was also kind of sloppily done within the pilot in and of itself. I think they might be going for a kind of like a Tyler Durgan-esque kind of aspect to him. I personally don't think it's necessary. I just feel because someone has social anxiety doesn't mean they also hear voices in their head or have those type of thoughts. Um, so we'll see here on out, or after all, this is just a pilot, how his mental illness is. And social anxiety in itself is not necessarily a mental illness. It's just a... It's a it can be a, a difficulty for people to engage. It's not necessarily means of necessary when classified in the classical sense when people think of a mental illness. Uh, you might say it's more of a disorder than a mental illness. Um, the typography, um, the, the opening sequence of Mr. Robot, the typography is a classic 80s style, almost gamer styles or early like Atari games, um, uh, magazines. Um, movie titles from the early 80s. The two names that he uses are usernames when he runs his programs. I found very interesting, which might, um, they might be playing into the duality of uh, Elliot as the individual who wants to be the saver of the world. Um, and at the same time, the kind of corporate guy that does, does what he's told to do. So his username, when he does all these hacking, um, is root, uh, R-O-T, um, the at sign Elliot, 
uh, and then the dollar sign. And then when he works for uh, all safe is in term E T E R M number, number money sign. And so he has two distinctive um, usernames when he uses his um, knowledge, his hacking techniques and style each time he does it. Um, I also like the fact that he used social hacking, which is uh, he did this a couple of different times where he won. He when he went to Martin, the boyfriend of his counselor, he got the hold of that person's phone by saying, hey, I, my phone is dead to actually calling Martin and pretending to be his um, banking and getting more personal and private information from Martin, realizing that um, Martin was not his real name. And that's how he was able to find out all the other information about him. The other thing I liked was the fact that he's always constantly in the hoodie. Um, not necessarily because it, it fits within the, you know, the young guy kind of dystopian outsider, antisocial personality, but it fits in with the whole social anxiety person because, um, Anyone who's familiar with that disorder or familiar with people that are similar to that faction, because Elliot is also kind of de a depressed guy. Uh, they wear jackets. They wear um, hoodies, jackets, sweaters, uh, and it's used as a blanket, as a means of securing themselves and keeping people at a distance. The other thing he does is he has a very massive backpack. So people can't necessarily come, from, come I think, come from behind him. It also allows him to carry it. God knows what he carries in his backpack, but carry a lot. It's very huge. It's not a, a simple school backpack. It's very big. And so it's something that I eventually would think you will see is going to be a lot of his tools of his trade, like his cables, uh, a couple of different computers or screens or something like that are going to be in that backpack. But I, that's something that you will sometimes see people that work in the tech industry do have a very either large backpack or a uh, pool um case that they walk around the other thing is i like the fact that his fish that he has in the episode he has a fish um before he gets a dog is called a uh, qwerty which is a q w e r t y which is how the, the configuration of the keyboard the naming of it is from there that if you look at your keyboard the top part is q w e r t y and this is the configuration of all, all keyboards how the the words are are aligned and the numbers and stuff like that was developed and done Overall, I think this is a very engaging episode. Again, I didn't particularly care for like the sloppiness of the voices inside of his head. I also don't think like the whole attacking E Corp and wiping out seventy percent of everyone's credit and debit, even though it's very topical and they talk about like the global collapse and the economy and the disparity of wealth that is occurring um, within the nation and consumerism overall. Um, I think that's something that's been done over and over kind of again. It's done very well by Fight Club. Um, I hope there's more to the cause, more than just to wiping out people's debt. Um, but overall, I do think this is a very accurate portrayal of hackerism, the ethos, the, the need and the ability and the want to solve the world's problems, in essence, saving the world from itself. Uh, being aware of things... Um, more so than other people being able to observe and see through um, the lies or the BS or the um, the ad, if you will, to see the heart to the matter, to see the problem. The other thing is um, I'm going to wait my assessment on um, Christian Slater's character, Mr. Robot, because I do think he's an, either an agglomation or an actual depiction of one particular individual out there in the tech industry. Um, I wait to see a couple more episodes before I make my assessment of him. But overall, I think this is a very well done, very um, great episode uh, or pilot, I should say. Um, I'm looking forward to the rest of the series. That's why I'm going to be um, doing these reviews. Not only that, but I think this is one of the few times I've actually, or anyone's actually seen the actual depiction of just anything computers done accurate to the world real world that it's not just made up Hollywood stuff or extra extra gizmos and things of that nature that have nothing to do with computing or hacking that it did is very very accurate so that's it for this review 
Thank you for joining us on this chat. You can find us on all podcast outlets such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, MixCloud, and any podcast catcher. You can reach us on Twitter at FSocietyIRC, our website at FSocietyIRC.xyz. You can email us at FSocietyIRC at ProtonMail.com. Our music attributes are under the Creative Commons license number three. The intro music is by Monk. The song is called The Planet Shakers, the Paragraph Remix. Our outro music is by Trevet Halbeka, and the song is Elf Kappa, as well as Kwana, and the song is Demons. You can support the show either via the QR code in the show notes by contributing with a Bitcoin or through PayPal, and there's a link in the show notes where you can PayPal me under Hiroja Shai. If you're very into uh, cryptocurrency, you can also tip me through a chain chip at Hiroja or at one name at Hiroja. Thank you very much for listening and look forward to hearing from you. Logging off.